everyone. I'm Lisa Copeland, and I love, love supporting women on this journey of finding love at this time in their life after 50, because you know what? This journey should be fun. And let's see this year how we can make it fun for you. But before we get started, I want to encourage you to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell so that the next time I release a video, you get a notification. All right, today we're going to talk about a really, really important subject, and that is getting in touch with your feminine side. This is one of the hardest things for us to do because this is something we were not taught. So I want to give you three tips for how to make this happen in your life. And I want to start by telling you a little story about my client, Nancy, who worked her butt off, worked it off, climbing up the corporate ladder to her current position as a senior vice president of sales. And if you've ever done this kind of a job or had a pretty high power job, you know you have to endure a lot to get there. And men were not always keen on working for her. And she knew over the years that they called her a bitch behind her back. And this meant she had to start to toughen up her heart because it really hurt. As a kid, her heart had been broken so easily by those who didn't like her. And these days she was really proud that this was no longer the case. Well, every day, Nancy came to work in her power suit, either a black skirt and jacket or a black pantsuit. She'd always figured if this is what successful men did in the corporate world, then she would do it too. And when it came to making presentations to her male colleagues, she felt she was pretty good at it. She knew exactly how to gather all the facts and figures, knowing men were logical and related to numbers well this way. However, there were times she actually felt herself leaving the meeting totally exhausted, feeling like she played a challenging mental game that she had to work hard at to win. And on a personal level, Nancy's marriage was suffering from her climb to the top of the corporate world. As the judge banged the gavel, declaring she and her husband of 20 plus years divorced, he looked at her sadly and he said, Nancy, I've loved you since we were kids, but you just don't know how to let me be a man. I cannot do this with you anymore. And she did ask him what it meant, but all he could do was hug her one last time, telling her she would have to figure it out on her own. Nancy had all the money she could ever want, and yet as she went to bed every night, she longed to feel a man's arms around her again, making her feel safe and loved. Divorced now for three years, she had tried dating, but men seemed to be really intimidated by her job and the power she reeled. She wasn't sure what to do, and that is when we began working together. And these three tips are the tips of the iceberg when it comes to men, but they started changing Nancy's life with men, both personally and in business. So let's start with tip number one. I showed Nancy how to stop competing with men. Nancy always felt like she had to turn her personality switch off and on between her work and dating life. But in reality, there's really no switch. The secret is learning how to relate to men. So they want to cooperate, not compete with you. And this means learning the language they respond to, the hero response. It's different from the language we as women use, and that is what's best for the community. And that is a huge disconnect and why we are not always on the same page with men. And that brings us to tip number two. I showed Nancy how to use the language men speak in here. And I suggested Nancy start using what I call the four magic words. I need your help at both work and in dating. As a woman, you are strong. And yes, you can do it all, even when it exhausts you. Yet most women I speak with are actually tired of doing it all. And they would love to have someone take some of the burden off their shoulders. But they fear if they ask for help that they're going to look weak. I want to tell you something really important. Emotionally healthy men 
are wired to make your life easier, both at work and in your personal life. And recently in my group program, we meet on Monday nights twice a month, and we always do what's called, what is the baby step that you took since we last met? And two of those women began practicing the phrase, I need your help. Now, let me share with you, it's really easy to distort that phrase and say, could you help me? But the person that used to say, could you help me, was his mom. It doesn't trigger the hero response in a man, like when you say, I need your help. When you go into the I, the personal I, he realizes, oh my God, I could make her life easier. So my clients were at the grocery store, both of them, and they used the word, I need your help. And they were amazed at how these men that didn't even know them puffed up. And men really do this because they do want to help you. They puffed up and they went and they helped them and they helped them get whatever it was they needed. And they were like amazed, amazed, amazed at this. It was like magic, they said. And this is the way you get your needs met by using that phrase, I need your help. Let's go to tip three. Take the masculine phrases, I believe and I think out of your vocabulary and try replacing them with the feminine phrase, I feel. Now you wanna understand why this is so important. Men were taught as children to really suck up their emotions. How many times did you watch a coach tell a kid, a boy at football or basketball or whatever they were playing, suck it up? Well, as a result of sucking it up when they were upset or frustrated, they did not learn how to identify emotions. Now we as women are actually pretty good at it. And this is what men rely on, is your ability to understand and let them in on the emotion you're feeling. And when you help them understand what you're feeling, you get your needs met with just this simple, simple vocabulary change from I believe or I think, and these are both masculine phrases from the brain, to I feel. This phrase shows your vulnerability from your heart, and it actually makes a man want to step up and make your life easier. Now, this doesn't mean telling a guy, I feel like you're an idiot for not doing this. That's not going to get you anywhere with a man. What you can say instead is, I feel frustrated when a project isn't completed, or I'm feeling angry or sad about this issue. Using the words, I feel, is also going to remind you to stay in your unique feminine power, which is your heart and your softness that men are so attracted to in women. Take these three tips and try them out with men and watch the difference it makes in your relationship with them. And as always, I want to inspire you. And I have a short little letter that my client Lisa from Minnesota wrote. She said, my quality man template helped me find my soulmate, yes, in my 50s. I am so grateful to have found Lisa Copeland and the Love After 50 program. The insights I learned about how men think and what they're looking for helped me to find my soulmate in my 50s. And we couldn't be more right for one another. We've been dating exclusively for over a year now and have definitely fallen in love with one another. I am so grateful to have written the Quality Man Template, which was the key tool to helping me realize that this man is the one I've been looking for all my life. Thank you, Lisa Copeland, for all you have taught me. Hugs and kisses and best wishes to you. If you want to know what a quality man template is, take a look before and set up a time for us to talk. I would love to help you find love this year in your own life. And go out and use these tips, always believing in you.